Hey guys, today's top 10 is on a subject that is very, very dear to my heart, and that is fitness. So <laughs> I didn't actually flex on that. I don't know why I felt the need to say that. No matter what type of exercise you like to do, I think that these are pretty well-rounded fitness essentials that you could add to any workout routine. So let's get started. My first pick is a stocked gym backpack. This is a Sherpa backpack from Lululemon. Let me open it for you on camera so you can see. My backpack is always stocked because I'm the type of person where not having the things I need to work out frustrates me the entire duration of the workout. So I won't skip a workout if I notice I forgot my headphones or I'm hungry or something. I'll still go, but I'll dwell on it the entire workout. So my first recommendation is to have your backpack stocked with every single thing that would inconvenience you if you didn't have it at the gym with you. My choice is a face wash. So this one is from Origins. If I come straight from work to a workout, I don't wanna work out with makeup on my face. I need to wash it or I feel gross. I feel like I'm doing my skin a disservice. And having a face wash or makeup wipes if you prefer makes you feel like you're sweating on clean skin instead of suffocating your pores. My next is a snack. This is just a protein bar. And as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I'm fully plant-based now. These are not, I think they have whey in them. They're also super processed that I'm trying to get away from processed food. So I had these on my subscribe and save and this will be my last order. I just want to not waste what I have. So using those up. Inhaler because I am asthmatic, but any medical need you have, make sure that you're prepared so it doesn't cause you a problem while you're exercising. My next, I have AirPods in here. I only have one pair of AirPods. So if these were elsewhere in my work bag, I might throw just the regular headphones or my Beats, the big headphones, just to have a backup because you don't always remember to transfer your headphones from bag to bag and working out without music is not always fun. So if not having headphones is something that would negatively impact the quality of your workout, make sure you have a spare in your gym bag. My next thing is pre-wrap. This can be used to hold your hair back. It can be used to wrap ankles, knees. You just rip off a piece. Good old deodorant. <laughs> Sometimes it's a long day at work and I don't want to smell like a farm animal while I'm exercising. Sometimes you just want to touch it up so you feel fresh while you're working out or if you shower at the gym. I've got a hair clip if I have a blowout and I just want to pin it up and I've got one of the hair bands that I talked about doesn't leave dents in your hair. I have a small towel in case I'm very sweaty and I'm also super allergic to those towels. They over bleach at the gym. So I like to have my own towel so that I don't rub those really bleachy smelling chemically towels on my face when I'm sweating. And actually when you're sweating, your pores are even more open than they normally are. So if you're sensitive to chemical detergents and you're sweating, you're going to be more sensitive to them. I think if I am around bleach towels and I'm not sweating, the reaction isn't quite so bad, but in this case, I just don't like to use it. And then here we have a temperature controlled water bottle. This is from Lululemon as well. But if you put cold water in here, it stays cold for so long. Same with hot liquids, but I don't know why you'd want that at the gym. They claim 12 hours or you could just fill it at the gym. <laughs> Up to you. It will make your backpack lighter for sure. And by the way, this backpack is tiny. I am fitting all of these things in this little bag and it's pretty lightweight. I even usually keep a spare credit card in here. If you do that, make sure that you have a lock for your gym bag or that the lockers lock automatically. So my next things are some perfume. Again, like to be fresh. A mask because those are the times that we're in. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm a lip reader. I think my hearing's not as good as other people's. So when the masks are on, I feel like I don't hear anything, but that's okay. Lots of miscommunications is better than lots of COVID. So my last thing is a dry shampoo workout mist that I showed in my hair video. This is just in case you have sweaty hair and you gotta keep it moving after your workout. So my first item took a bit of a longer period of time because it had so many layers. My next item is also a little bit complicated, but I promise these items get less complicated as I go. The next thing I wanna talk about is wearing the right clothes for your workout. I feel like for the most part, when people buy clothing, they buy it because they like it. And that's not always the best methodology when buying exercise clothes because fitness clothes is tailored toward the activity. So for example, this is an aloe yoga top. And if I were to wear this to run, I would regret it because it has a shelf bra in it. And sorry for those of you that this doesn't apply to, but if you wear a top that is designed for yoga, which is a very low impact activity and then participate in a high impact activity, there's no support. So use your imagination, but it's really uncomfortable. And you always wanna think what was this garment designed to do? So my example for you guys today is shorts. So I brought three pairs of shorts. 
Also Lululemon, my favorite. What do you think these are for? These are for running. So running long distance, there's a little place for your keys. They prevent chafing, they're sweat wicking. They do the things that you need when running, but they're also a little too short for, let's say, team sports. So running, you're always in the same position. These shorts really accommodate that. But then you think, okay, what if I wanna go play lacrosse or field hockey or soccer? So then you have shorts like this and they're longer and they cinch at the waist, meaning they're not gonna slide down. Something like this you can wear for running or for sports, but something like this I would only wear for running and it's superior to something like the soccer shorts only for running because it's made to wick off significant quantities of sweat that you would generate when just running for a long distance or just doing cardio. Another pair of shorts, these are yoga shorts, cycling shorts. I got them on Carbon 38. Shorts like these are intended for activities like yoga and cycling, but these aren't meant for running because they have even compression all the way down, meaning as someone who's tried to run in them, they will start to slide down as you're running or if you're in a high intensity interval training class, they often don't stay put because they're not designed with the maximum cinching at the waist. They're just compressing all the way down. So when you're doing something where you're gonna be bouncing around, you wanna make sure that your clothes are designed to hang on to the place on your body where they're supposed to. You always just wanna think, what's this fabric? How is this shirt or pants going to respond to the activity I'm going to do? You don't wanna wear a tennis skirt to a class where you're going to be inverted. I feel like people just kind of wear whatever to whatever and it doesn't really make sense. If you're going to a dance class and you're dancing hip hop, you want clothes that's gonna move with you because it gives you more attitude. <laughs> so just put a little bit more thought into why you wear the clothes to the activity you wear them to. Because every time I find myself wearing yoga pants on a long distance run, I spend significant amounts of time hiking them back up as they continuously slide down. My next item also pertains to running. This is an armband. I have a very, very large cell phone, like the maximum large iPhone you can have right now. It fits into this little armband. So you just slide it up your arm like so and then unzip this put your iphone your keys your wallet whatever i mean not a wallet but a credit card would fit in here with your phone and your keys and go for a run and it sticks on my arm it doesn't slide down i think they're just called armband for running is what i searched online and it's a random brand it zips closed i run with it all the time it's awesome but if you don't like something on your arm i also have this spy belt <laughs> which I got from a random running store in my hometown in Pennsylvania. And it's the same deal. It expands to the size you need it to. I usually put my phone in it and then put it on my back and tighten it because I don't like anything bouncing when I run. It's distracting to me. Speaking of running and sports in general, I think that people don't realize how important it is to make sure that their feet are aligned. So something I learned in yoga, I practiced a lot of yoga growing up, is that alignment is the foundation to every athletic activity that we do. So if you're practicing a sport and every time you come home, you're icing your knees, it might not be your knees. It might be that your feet are pronating when you run or that you have flat feet or collapsing arches. I have collapsing arches, which means that when you look at my foot, you see an arch. But when I step down, my foot becomes flat, which overstretches my ankle. And when I was playing sports in regular sneakers, like the flat knit sneakers that everyone wears, without putting arches inside of my sneakers, I believed that I had tendonitis in my ankles. I went to physical therapy. It was expensive, it was time consuming. Then one day I went to buy new sneakers. The salesperson in the running store said, hey, do you know that you have collapsing arches, that you have flat feet? you should wear either super supportive shoes that when you step down, hold your arch in place, or you should get a podiatrist to make you custom inserts. And that's what I did. Mine are so beat up. It's an amazing investment in the health of your ankles, your knees, your hips, because you wanna make sure that you are aligned so you don't have any health problems later down the line. The point of exercise is to make you healthier, not to give you more ailments. So just make sure you're taking care of yourself. My next fitness must have is Lifting gloves. These are actually for a sport. I just have gloves and whenever I'm lifting with the metal, I do not think it's okay to have the calluses all over the tops of my hands. And for guys as well, it's easily preventable. There's not really a point unless you just like the rugged look. Usually guys who lift, you can tell they lift without checking their palms of their hands from observable factors. So I just think everyone should have gloves when they're lifting so as not to destroy their hands. And this is a very simple one. So let's go to the next because they are a little bit more complicated. <laughs> My next item pertains to any outdoor sports. So 
Again, the whole point of fitness is taking care of our bodies. Our skin is our largest organ. It's really unhealthy to go outside without sunscreen or without sun protection and play sports because you're in the moment. You don't feel the sun beating on you because you're moving quickly, but it is. And the rays are aging your skin. If you're burning, they're cooking your skin. So I think the best thing we can do is get a lightweight hat. This one is super breathable. I run in it. White is probably the lightest, but if you get any light color, black can make your head hot because it attracts the sun. So make sure you're not letting the sun beat directly on your face if you're running outside. Also try not to run during peak hours. That's 10 to two. If you don't feel like wearing a hat, sunscreen. <laughs> so these are two of my favorite face sunscreens. They're both mineral sunscreens. So that's better for your skin than chemicals. This is from First Aid Beauty and it's tinted. So you get to look a little bit glam. And I've, I've put it on my boyfriend before. Guys can wear it too. You can't tell. It just gives you a little bit of a more even skin tone and it's SPF 30 from First Aid Beauty. And then this one is from MD Solar Sciences. This one has oil, this one is oil free. It's SPF 50 and not tinted, but I love both of these. Amazing for running, don't burn your eyes when they drip. Cause I had one from Kodali for years and it's super good sun protection, but when I would sweat a lot, it would drip in my eyes and burn. So I just couldn't do that. It's too humid in DC. And then these are two of my favorite body ones. So again, Kodali, this is an oil with SPF 30 that I'll spray on my arms. I especially use this when it's kind of late and I don't really need sunscreen, but I'm not about to go run outside for an hour without it. So I'll use that. But if it's more sunny, I'll use something like this. And this is from CeraVe and it's a mineral sunscreen as well, so it doesn't irritate my skin. It's SPF 50 and just any exposed parts of your skin really quick, make it part of your routine so that working out does not do you dirty. <laughs> My next item has to do with home workouts. I think everyone should have resistance bands. Mostly people who want to have a nice perky butt. Works wonders. I don't lift heavy at all because of my spinal surgery. I can't put heavy weights on my shoulders. I can only really lift light. So when I want to get that definition in my legs and glutes, I use these bands and just do repetitions, ballet drills. And I know they have ones now that don't slip. You can also use these for upper body exercises, but I don't know any of them. I guess I could think of some just using my brain, but really awesome for at home, lower body workouts and really inexpensive, easy thing to add. My next item is really large and I don't know if I can even show you, but here it is. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm just gonna put a small picture of this because I feel so ridiculous holding it. I think that everyone should have a really comfy, clean yoga mat at home that they don't use for workouts necessarily because even when you wash them, they kind of still have that smell. A yoga mat that is meant for stretching and if you can leave it open in your house, that's even better. If there's a place on the floor that you don't use for anything else, a peaceful place where you can stretch and meditate, leave the mat there all the time because when we're reminded of what we want to do visually, we're more likely to do it. A lot of times when we work out, we just want to leave the gym when we're done. So we don't stretch and we feel accomplished. We feel tired. We're hungry, whatever. So when you're home, you're comfortable, you showered and you see this mat there, it's a visual reminder to go stretch. There are amazing videos on YouTube for stretching. I love yoga with Cassandra, yoga with Adrian. They're 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Mad Fit has really good stretching videos. After you've stretched, you'll find that workouts are easier the next couple of days. You feel less physically stressed. I use the Calm app to meditate on my mat. My apartment is only a one bedroom, so I tend to roll it up, but I still roll it up and leave it in plain sight. So when I see it there, I say, oh, you didn't stretch today. It's a reminder for me that keeps me on my game and keeps me feeling good so I don't get injured when I work out and so I can overall just be less anxious in my life because stretching has so many benefits. I just realized I'm still wearing this, but it's kind of a cool look, so I'm just gonna leave it. My next item is this baby. <laughs> it is an Apple Watch. I think that fitness trackers bring in a social component to exercise. I think there's accountability that they introduce. It depends on what drives you. For me, I have all of my notifications turned off. Sorry to my friends. <laughs> but the reason I never congratulate you on your workouts is because Notifications distract me, so I don't get notifications. The social aspect isn't as salient to me, but what is, is the data. So I check my data all the time. Probably every night before I go to bed, I just look and see how much did you move today? I get the reminders. So if it says you didn't move this hour, I'll just get up and walk around. If I'm in the office, I'll walk. If I'm home, I just do some jumping jacks or whatever. But it does keep you honest with how much exercise you're doing. 
And it also encourages you to make time and effort for more non-exercise movement. That means walking, that means when you do house chores, you realize that you're burning calories, you're being active. It just gives you an awareness of how to have a less sedentary lifestyle. And this leads me to my last and final item, which I'm not going to bring with me because it is a piece of furniture. I have a standing desk and you can get a very desk. That's just a brand of it, but basically a desk that can sometimes sit and sometimes stand because standing all the time is hard for most people and for me it's fine but there are some days when my ankles are a little sore and I'm I don't really see the point in standing for 12 hours so I'll mix it up and stand a little sit a little so having a standing desk or a desk where you're able to stand is important because a it can burn up to 50 extra calories per hour versus sitting so that's one thing another thing is it's easier to move around while you're standing it keeps your body from going into total sedentary fat storage lazy setting. Kind of the way you feel when you're on an airplane and you're sitting for so long. I haven't sat in a work chair for long enough recently to even remember what that feels like at work because since my spinal surgery, I don't sit very long. I get up a lot and I have to move or my legs get really tingly. But in that respect, it's actually for the best because people don't realize that working out one hour a day and then spending the whole rest of your day sedentary isn't fitness. Fitness is movement in your life. It's being active. So if you're spending most of your day at work and then you come home and work out for 40 minutes and then you sit on the couch, you're sitting more than 95% of your day. I just did that math quickly, but yeah. 45 minute workout, like maybe like 3%. I just made that up. Okay, hopefully I'm right. <laughs> so the point here is that you want to introduce as much movement as possible into your day and a standing desk helps keep your heart rate a little bit higher and it helps you remember to move your body. So that's everything I have for you today. I hope at least one of these things or a couple of these things will help you improve your fitness rituals. And if there's any you'd like to share with me, please let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel as I release a new video every Thursday day at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again for listening and there's more talk to come soon. Bye for now.